anyway, but that's what this is, okay? This is this is that the high tool. I'm gonna keep it sharp here, okay? So, um, and basically, look, I mean, it's it's real simple. I mean, you're coming through, and you know, you can use this to start chipping out the glazing, okay? And it's not so. I mean, I mean, it's not so easy all the time, but this one seems to be okay. I don't know why, but maybe it's kind of new. Who knows? Okay. Now I'm using that technique. See, this is a push technique with this bar, but my favorite technique of all is a vertical technique, where I'll find a place to exploit. Like I see a crack right there. Okay. And I don't know. Maybe I can exploit even more. Take my little tool here, put it in there and, oh, see, look, that comes out. I mean, maybe that's the way you do all the way down, but I'm going to demonstrate this other tool here where I take this and I start chipping it out that way. See that? Okay. Now, okay, so I was telling you guys about the steam box, okay? The steam box that we have a sash out there cooking right now that I'll bring in in a few minutes, you'll see that I'm going to be able to do what I'm doing here, but like in a minute, all of them, okay? Because that steam is going to get under and it's going to loosen all this stuff up and I'm going to be able to just pop it all out. The disadvantage to the steam, okay, is that it's steam and it's wet and that's about all you can do to that sash right then is to get glass out and then it's gonna dry. Alright. And there are other there's other methods that you can do to kind of speed things up. Like like you can do the stripping process and then stick it in the steamer. That's good. But you still can't really go in and sand anything because that wet saturated wood, it's very, very stringy and it, it won't it won't work really good. So the advantage to doing it this way is that you can keep on if you've got one or two you know, and you can get this deglazed in the morning, you know, and heat gun. You can finish this sash today. Right? You can. Where the steam box says, eh, probably tomorrow. <laughs> you know? And so, but if but if you've got a batch of 10 and that's all you do all day is switch sash back and forth out of that and you're deglazing, right? And whatever, right? Because then the next day, you'll fit, it's going to take you days anyway to do it this way. You know, stick it in there. Okay. One of the advantages to the steam box also is you'll get less glass breakage. Because you're going to break a piece of glass. Mark my words. You will. I, I've broken too many already. All right? But guess what? Everybody breaks glass. That's all right. So anyway, so let me, let me finish this here. I'm just going to get a piece of glass now. Because, man, I'm going to... After I get this piece of glass out, I'm going to hand these tools over to you and let you continue the honors. Okay? okay. Alright. So maybe that's not I noticed how heavily you can break that hammer down there. Is this tempered glass? <laughs> well, if it's not, it'll, uh, no, it's just regular glass. Yeah. Okay. Um, Make it look so easy. Yeah. Well, 1,050 sashes later, you know. See, there we go. But uh, what's the trick for keeping from breaking the glass? You <laughs> oh, you, you know, but that, that's a good question, okay? Because look, I want you to notice the direction of my hammer strike. It's this way, okay? It's not this way, okay? That's, and, and if you get and if you're you got a tool like this and it's going this way. Look, I'm still having the force of my blow toward my glass, all right? So I want all the force of my blows to be this way or at least glancing up that way, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you, you can still break a piece. Yeah. Trust me, you know? My, uh, my brother-in-law, Scott, he had a record of like, I don't know, 178 pieces, you know, taken out without breaking a one. Um, I mean, I don't know anybody that's beaten his records yet. And I was like so impressed. So I went over there to film him. 
see what his style was, and dang it if he didn't break one. <laughs> you know, right then and there. You know, so anyway, so look, I've got that tool here to, you know. Now you can suck it up to that. point in time this piece of glass has apparently been replaced once but I tell us it's got these new glazing points in it by new I mean more modern okay and these are the ones that are awful that come from Home Depot mm -hmm. okay and they don't really they don't really work well for what we do we don't use these kind in that wood window makeover I mean, if we had to an emergency in a pinch sure ah but you guys just missed what I did what tool did I use to get that out a zipper, a zipper. Because it's got these little itty bitty teeth on there, they go in there and they just hook on it and they just pull it out. You know? Oh look, see, there's a diamond. See that? That's a good question. Why is there a diamond and two push points? I don't mm -hmm. know. Doesn't make any sense. Okay? There's a little diamond right there. So, but see, this these little teeth are so perfect for going in and hooking that diamond. Okay? And pull it out. Okay? This is the kind that we use. Okay? See that? Okay. So how, why why is this better? What makes it better? Look how small it is. Uh huh. Okay. This guy. Okay. This is this guy is a I would call this a corporate glazing point. Okay. Because it's designed in such a way so that it's just a little bit too big and it just doesn't work enough. All right. <laughs> okay. So it doesn't serve anybody but the corporations that sell them to you. All right. And make you not want to do it anymore. So, anyway, where, not, where do you get these? Uh, you have to order these online. Those are called diamond points, uh -huh. and you can usually find them on the under the acronym DP1 or DP2. This is a size DP1, mm -hmm. but the bigger size is DP2, and then there's a DP5. It's a triangle shape. Okay, and all of them are legit. Um, these guys here, they shoot in with a gun. I've got a, I've got a gun I'll introduce you guys to tomorrow, probably. And um, uh, there's, I've also got hammers I'll introduce you to, special hammers that drive them in sufficiently. Because one of the things that, like, one of, the, one of the things that these do to trip you up, these big points, is they, they stick out. What, what, you know, you've got you've got this shelf that the glass sits on. That, that that's what that molding is that we're going to strip. Okay. That's a little shelf. That, you know, the glass sits in. Well, this this point here, the, the the butt end of it is so big. You know, it sticks out over the shelf yeah. so that you can see it from the inside. So anybody who's going to do any kind of quality work has to manually clip this guy just so you can't see it. The other thing too is that um, when you're glazing, one of the things I'm going to teach you or tell you about that you're going to learn over time is that the best glazing terminates. You know that that little triangle that's going to that you shape to paste to hold the glass in. The, the that little line, you want that to rest just inside of that shelf. That, that's perfect, because what are you going to do? What you guys have been doing, you're going to lap the paint up onto the glass. And if your glazing is right, your glazing is proper, guess what? You've got a little bitty gap there that you can lap the paint up onto the glass and not see it from the inside. Oh, <laughs> isn't that awesome? Awesome. Okay? You can't do that with these big freaking corporate points, you know? You can only do it with the little ones. And why they give you corporate point, I don't know. I, yeah, I do. They don't want you doing the work. So, anyway, okay, so all that. So I might have another one over here, but these are, these are also good for hunting down points. You know, you run along the edge there, and there's a metal point in there, guess what? It'll hook it, you know, and you'll catch it, and you'll know, okay? So I'm gonna hook it in there. Okay, so look, I've got that, but I've also got this guy here. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and maybe get some of this residue out. Okay. Okay, I got to get that. 
rest is glazing out because I've got to get this glass out. Oh, isn't that nice? Okay. So, just so you guys know, this is tomorrow's work. All right. So, I don't expect that any of you guys are going to get all this glass out today. Unless you want to stay till night. Sure. Yeah? Sure. It'll be dark in here. <laughs> All right. Hey, buddy. Hey. How's it going? Good. So we got this here. You know, I'm just, I'm just pushing this. Um, to get that glazing out of that corner. Okay? So this is a good tool for that. So... Almost that point. Dun, dun, dun. So let's see, maybe this one here, get some of that stuff out of there. Now, one of the things that people will do to screw you is um, they will caulk this in on the other side. The caulking acts like glue, okay, and makes it really difficult to get stuff out. You always you have to get make sure you're getting all of this glazing residue out of here, okay, because one little piece will be the piece that gets caught on the glass and causes it to break. So many different techniques. So the first piece of glass is always the hardest. That's a good idea there. I see you, Donald. Okay. Right. The other thing, the other one, two of you. All right. A little duster brush. You can tell by the squishiness Somebody put caulking on that thing. of the caulk that it's caulking because the, the glazing compound itself is just more brittle. Okay. So someone I might ask. Why is it so expensive to pay the sash? Well, because you're paying an actual person. You know, you're not paying a robot from a corporation. Stations to PlayStation. What is it? What is it? Nintendo Switch. The, the oh. Nintendo Switch. It's not dead. Not dead. What's the next one? You want to use the phone. Oh, <laughs> and, and we're currently using the phone to record this. No? Yeah. Oh, just checking. Well, that's, uh, that's what it seemed like. I would do. Oh, see that? That, and that's what you're going to run in. See, you had a good time up until now, you know? And so, you got to like, this is where you have to really 
exercise your patience. Yeah. Do you see what I'm? Do you see what I'm doing? I'm just taking that that very very thin thin blade, and I'm just gently working it into the corner. Like remember when I showed you how to take this, right. and then then wiggle it into the corner up there. Okay. Same general movement, different place, different application. This is where you need the classical music. This is where you need podcast. Okay. Maybe you've got the TV set up. You know, watching the soccer game. That's probably not a good idea. You get too excited. Um, so. Um, Gosh, this is like, man, see, trying to make this piece of glass move, which, which is kind of, I'm, I'm like, I'm not sure what's going on because it seems like, because when I had a diamond point here, a diamond point there, and a big point there, and a big point there, I was wondering why I had different styles of points, and I assumed that maybe this piece of glass had been replaced. But if it's been replaced, how did the diamond points get there? And if they had diamond points here, how come no diamond points here but not there? Oh man, see, I think about these things. Yeah. What's that? It's getting there. Moving? Yeah. See, everybody gets excited, right? Yeah. So, did mm -hmm. you try to take it up at a corner or in the middle of the square? Uh, I like the corner. You know, so yeah, I get a little bit of movement. See, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Gosh, what's holding it? Maybe I've got some squeeze out up into yeah. here. We'll cut to a commercial. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's kind of what needs to happen. Gosh. Right. Right. The world's most boring window restoration video. Sometimes it's a real pain. Yeah. Right. Okay, here we go, right? No? Okay. Yeah, it's sticking in the corner. That's why yeah. I asked you that question. It's easy to be coming up midway. Yeah, midway. It's, it's the corner. Yeah. See, this is like. Yeah, going See what I'm doing now? I'm grabbing it underneath. I'm kind of pressing with my fingers. You know what I'm doing? Gosh. It's just not. Well, it's going there. Can y'all see me starting to get excited and like frustrated and, and anxious and stuff? That's that's exactly what happens. You know, you just have to like kind of like revisit your meditative state. You know, if you get out of you know your meditative state, you know, for sure it's gonna break. You know, it's like the glass senses it and says, "Ha ha ha!" ha. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sucker. You know, that's the other thing, too, is that glass doesn't like to be in tension. What a save! Yeah, it's just right in that corner, I can see it sticking. Isn't it? It's like yeah. crazy. Yeah. Oh, see, okay, that's one. It's coming. Oh, there you're coming up. That's it. You're, you're getting it. <laughs>
is caulking, you know? Yeah. So, there you go. So, that's what you find about the eel of caulking. So, guess what? You can exhale now. All right. Next. <laughs> that was awesome. Woo! Okay.